So standard is finally rotating. So that means NIS is gone and Hydroid Crisis is gone and the format should be healthy, right? Except we've still got Ugin and we've still got Uro and a whole bunch of busted landfall mechanics are about to make their way into standard. Oh boy. I know, I know, it seems pretty bad, but there's reason to believe that Simic won't be as dominating in the, the next standard as it has been in the past, and I'd like to get into that real quick. The first thing worth pointing out is the fact that Simic no longer has a single dual land available to it that comes into the battlefield untapped. There is no blue-green pathway. Let me say that again. There is no blue-green pathway. That could change come call time, but for the next few months at least, no untapped lands for you, Simic. None. They'll be forced to play things like Triomes and Temples just to get the color that they need on curve. This is a bit of a downside as it's gonna slow them down considerably and there are some pretty fast decks in the format. Statistically speaking over time, whenever a format rotates, the really fast aggro decks are the decks that tend to dominate in the first few weeks because people are still trying to figure out what's working and what isn't working and red deck just gets there. So this is going to hold them back a bit in the beginning. The second reason I'd like to bring up isn't as obvious. Rogues are going to be huge in the upcoming format. Uh, if you think they won't, you're lying to yourself. Uh, they're being pushed pretty hard. And one of the better rogues that we got in the last set, Core 2021, is Ghostly Pilferer. Now, Ghostly Pilferer draws you a card every time they play a spell that doesn't come from their hand, which means Uro. Uro, and more Uro. Lots of cards for you, and then you just completely beat out Simic before they can even get there. The final and probably most important reason why I don't think Simic will be as dominating as it used to be is this little gem right here. Now this card is called Confounding Conundrum. Confounding Conundrum is an enchantment for two mana and when it's on the battlefield, whenever they play a land, if they already played a land that turn, they have to return a land to their hand. I can see this baby sitting in sideboards all day and you play against Simic, you pull it out, you completely shut down their ramp game. It's obvious to me that this is the answer to Simic ramp and it's gonna see a lot of play. Earl's gonna run away, he's gonna hide in a corner, he's gonna cry to his mommy and we'll move on with our lives. The last thing I want to talk about this week is the potential for a new landless meta. Now I've talked to some people about this and some people seem warm on it, some people seem cold on it. With these new lands on one side, relevant spells on the other, modal cards coming into the environment, you could potentially build a deck with zero lands, fill them all with relevant cards that can come into play as lands, play your entire mana base that way, when you get to the late game, it's just straight gas. You never run out of things to do, the potential is there. Is it slow? It might be. Is it too slow? I don't know. But I think the right kind of deck could really take advantage of that sort of theory crafting. How impactful is it going to be to the current meta? I don't know. We're really going to have to test it out, see how it works. Um, some people think that it's going to be gimmicky and it won't work out. I think more than likely we're going to land on something in between. You know, it's not going to be straight landless decks, but I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a deck that runs 8 to 16 lands and then 
fills out the rest of its land drops with these modal spells. And then when you get to the late game, you're hitting way more gas than your typical opponent would. And you just don't run out of steam. I feel like it will impact the environment in similar ways to adventure creatures. With adventure creatures, you had so much more potential and so much more coming out of every single spell. You know, every adventure creature in its own way is kind of a two for one. And in a similar way, these aren't necessarily a two for one, but instead of drawing dead lands in the late game, you're drawing a one for one. So it's turning a dead card into something relevant. And I think it'll it'll turn out similar. I don't think it will be as powerful as adventure spells. So so don't don't get your panties in a twist. But I think it's relevant. I think you're going to see some experimentation here and I wouldn't be surprised to see a landless or almost landless deck go pretty far. I'll be messing around with a couple ideas myself and I'm going to keep that I'm going to keep that under wraps until next week, but next week will be the first week of the standard meta with Zendikar and you're going to see you're going to see some interesting things come out of it especially from us. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Now that wraps up our very first episode of State of the Game. Next week's episode will be really interesting as we can find out if I've been talking on my ass or if anything I've said comes to fruition. But either way, I think it'll be pretty interesting. Until then, like, subscribe, comment, share us with your friends, make fun of us behind our backs, and uh, we'll see you next time.